Hello everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 5 of tutorial series on AWS Glue. In this video, I will cover how to query data in S3 using Athena via the AWS Glue data catalog. So before we go ahead, let's quickly understand Amazon Athena at the high level, like what it is. So Amazon Athena is an interactive query service that enables us to easily analyze data directly in Amazon S3 using standard SQL. And Athena is serverless, so you only pay for the queries that you run. Okay, so that's a quick about Amazon Athena. Now moving along, in the previous videos, we have transformed the CSV data and loaded the transformed data as packet files. And then uh, we have also registered the respective tables uh, within the database. So now we want to query both the CSV and packet format data using Athena via Glue Data Catalog. So let's get started. So now assuming that you have already logged in into AWS Management Console and once you are there, let's navigate to Athena. Now when you open Amazon Athena for the first time, it looks something like this. Now as soon as you see this screen, click on Explore the Query Editor. Now here once you are in this console, you will get this information bar that says before you run your first query, you need to set up a query result location in Amazon S3. So all you need to do is click on edit settings or you can click on settings from here as well. So click on settings and click on manage. Now here we need to configure this query result location and encryption option. Now it says that location of query result is optional but if you do not set this location then uh, it will not populate the results uh, while you execute the query. Now, if you already have the bucket for which you can provide the reference over here, then you can click on browse S3 or else you can go to the S3 management console and create a new bucket and then uh, copy and paste the S3 bucket URI over here. And you also need to make sure that you refer to the bucket which is in the same region. So as you can see, it says enter an S3 prefix in the current region where the query result will be saved as an object. Now I already have the bucket, so I will click on browse S3 and I will search for Athena. I will select the first one that is AWS Athena query results and it's an US East one that is North Virginia. So click on choose. Now once you are done with the configuration of the query result location, you can optionally configure this additional option and once you are done with the configuration, click on save. Now here we have successfully configured the asked information Okay, now we can go back to editor. The Amazon Athena query editor looks something like this. So under editor in the left panel, it says data and within data panel, we will have data source and database and its respective tables and views. So within data source, it's going to be the AWS data catalog. And as soon as you select the data source, you will get all the databases listed in this dropdown. So in our case, it's customer underscore data that we have created and populated. So we are going to select that. And once you select the respective database, you will get all the tables listed under tables and views. So here uh, we have populated two tables that is CSV underscore reports and then the transform data table that is parquet underscore parquet underscore reports. And then when I click on this expand button, I should be able to see the column name with its respective data type for both the tables. Now let's say we want to query these tables. So one option is that you can click on this uh, three dots and you can select preview table under run query. Okay, so let's do that preview table and it will populate the query for us. It says select star from the customer data dot CSV underscore reports limit 10. And then you should be able to see the results below. So this is how the data looks like. And then if we want to query the packet reports, again, I can click on this three icons and click on preview table. And I should be able to see the results under the results panel. Apart from that, uh, you can also query the information schema. You can also execute something like, let's say, select schema underscore name from information underscore schema dot schemata okay and then you can click on run and this will list all the schema name over here 
So it is basically listing all the databases that we have under AWS Glue data catalog, right? And on top of this, you can add certain filters that you want and so on. Now here for any data that you would like to query, Athena must have the underlying table. So it should have these tables if you want to query the data. Therefore, before querying the data, a table must be registered in Athena and the tables creation process registers the data set with Athena. And this registration occurs in the AWS Glue data catalog, which enables Athena to run queries on the data. So keep this thing in mind, in order to query any data, you must have the table and it must be registered in Athena. Okay. Now, apart from Athena, S3 has a feature that is S3 select feature uh, that basically allows you to run SQL queries in S3 against the data that is sitting in the S3. Now you might ask that how S3 select feature is different from Athena. So at the high level, S3 select feature has some limitation. Like uh, it only works with a single object. It supports only three clauses which are from, where and limit. Whereas uh, with Athena, one can query across multiple objects in S3 and Athena supports joins, grouping and constraints. So basically Athena is aimed at use cases like business analytics, reporting, analyzing large volume of data and so on. So guys, this is how you can query the data in S3 via AWS Glue data catalog using Amazon Athena. But apart from this simple queries like select, you can also come up with the complex queries which contains joins, groupings and constraints. So you can go ahead and uh, execute the complex queries with Amazon Athena, right? So guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover as a part of this video and I hope you found this video helpful. Until that time, if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.